Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. If you haven't seen the show before, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, uh, I work as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, and I do nothing but elder law. This isn't about my day job. Of course, this is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to one of the many presentations I've done at uh, the Hudson Senior Center over the years, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And the purpose of these shows was to help you, if you're like Frank and Mary, um, fi figure out the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about in order to just stay where you are for the rest of your life. And so um, some people know me, everybody knows my co-host, John Parent, because he's been on the Board of Selectmen now for a number of years. Uh, and, and he has been kind enough to, to um, be my co-host on these shows and to find like terrific guests um, to, so that we can discuss issues with them and discuss you know, what, these, what the important programs are. And, and as a matter of fact, um, in our last show, we actually had is Joanne McIntyre, right? Who, is, who has been uh, an assessor in um, the town of Hudson for just ages and ages to talk about uh, some abatement, you know, elderly abatement issues, tax deferrals, some other issues regarding to assessment. And after we, we did the show, John and I were talking and, and we were really, John was really mentioning that it would probably be really handy for people to have a little more in-depth view of the, of the, of, from, the, from your perspective, from your perspective when you're filing those taxes, uh, you probably wanna be knowing about a state program to help you pay for them, right? And from your point of view as a taxpayer, you may wanna know more about how the, how the money comes in, how the money goes out. So we really thought this would be a good show to just talk about money since we had just talked about assessments in the last show. So John, thank you very much for coming on and for being the guest today. Um, and and um, I know this, is our, this should be our last show before the end of the year. So I know we're, 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 we're wishing everybody a happy and you know, stay out of the way of the COVID uh, Christmas, Christmas season. So can you start off by just talking about the, you know, the, the issue I had just mentioned that, and that you really um, have spent some time working on uh, because of your volunteer work in the past, working with that, the, that AARP program at the senior centers. Can you talk a little bit, well, talk a little bit about that program uh, because people may be interested, you know, soon after, you know, um, people start signing up for, for, for tax advice with those folks really early into the beginning of the year. And then if you could talk about the tax credit, that would be great. Great, all right, thank you, Arthur, I appreciate it. Uh, and, and we do want people to remember that uh, even though the vaccine is on its way, uh, COVID-19 is still a real issue uh, until we get a substantial number of the people in the country uh, vaccinated. So be careful uh, out there. Uh, let, let me talk a little bit about uh, a specific uh, tax break uh, and, and then move kind of to the town uh, and give you a good idea or, or hopefully a better idea of where the money comes from uh, for us to operate and, and where it goes. But let me first talk about uh, a tax break that's called a senior circuit breaker tax credit. And what it is, is as a senior citizen, you may be eligible to claim a refundable credit on your personal state income tax return. Now, I, I did do some work with the uh, AARP uh, tax program uh, at both the Senior Center in uh, Hudson, as well as the one in Marlborough. And there are an awful lot of people uh, who came in to do their taxes for no other reason other than the fact that they could claim this credit, which is up to $1,150. So certainly worthwhile uh, looking into. Even if you are not in a position where you even have to file uh, for taxes, you can claim this credit by filing both an IRS tax return as well as a Massachusetts state income tax return. So let, let me go through some of the criteria and I'll explain who is eligible uh, and, and basically how it works. So as you might suspect, number one, you have to be a Massachusetts resident. 
you must be 65 years uh, or older as of January 1st, 2021. Now, if you are married and one of you is 65 and the spouse is not, you still qualify. So only one individual has to be at age 65. You must own or rent residential property in Massachusetts and occupy it as your primary residence. Now, the income limits along with the age limit um, are not very restrictive. For tax year 2020, your Massachusetts income must not exceed $61,000 for a single uh, individual, $76,000 for a head of household, and $92,000 for married couples filing a joint return. So th these are pretty flexible uh, guidelines as far as income. They're not very restrictive. Those are huge um, numbers for clients. You know, they, is, I, do, yeah. I do a lot of senior work and that, that's a, a lot of people have a lot of assets, but when they look at income, that's a big income numbers, right? Yeah, it, it is. Uh, and I think a lot of people, when they see this type of tax credit designed strictly for seniors, I think there's almost an automatic assumption that well, that must be for people making fifteen thousand a year, or twenty thousand, or lower amounts. Uh, and, and they probably assume that it goes away as you get into these higher numbers. Where, oh, where, sure. Whereas these are these these are very very high numbers. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, if you are a homeowner, then your Massachusetts property tax payments, together with one half of your water bill, uh, and sewer expense must exceed 10% of your total Massachusetts income for the tax year. Now, there is a difference here. In Massachusetts, when you file your federal income tax, if you do, uh, Social Security income is not, in, I'm, I'm sorry, Massa under Massachusetts income tax, your Social Security is not included as income. It is excluded. Uh, if you were to file federal taxes, that uh, Social Security would be included uh, up to a portion of it. When you apply for this credit, all income, no matter what it is, Social Security, W-2, interest, dividends, uh, total income is included. Now, if you're a renter, then 25% of your annual Massachusetts rent must not exceed 10% of your total Massachusetts income for the year. So a couple of exclusions. You must be a, a you can't be a non-resident. If you're married filing separately, you do not qualify. <clears throat> if you're a dependent of another taxpayer, as far as rental, if you receive a federal and or state rent subsidy, or you rent from a tax exempt entity, then you are, do not qualify. And further, you, for tax year 2020, if the assessed value of your principal residence exceeds 848,000, then you do not qualify. So. Uh, how does it actually work? Let me give you a couple of examples. I was just going to ask that because you know that's a, that's a lot of no, that's a lot of numbers. That, that's a lot that of numbers. Yeah. yeah, but basically, it, here's the key. I guess you have to qualify. Uh, you have to be 65 or older. There is an income limit. You have to be either a homeowner or a renter, non-subsidized um, rental on the uh, renter part. Um, and your taxes or 25% of your rent has to exceed 10% of your total income. So let me give you a couple of examples. For a homeowner, the average home in Hudson now is $394,000. The average tax is $6,557. 
So let's assume you make $40,000 a year in total income. 10% of 40,000 is $4,000. Your tax, and I'm going to just assume the water bill is included. Your tax is $6,557. So your tax of 6,000 plus exceeds 10% of your income. The difference is $2,557. You would get the maximum. You would get the 1150. So you can't get more, but you could get less. If your income is up a few notches and your combined total income is $70,000, then 10% of 70,000 is 7,000. You would get zero because your 10% of your income exceeds your taxes plus one half of the water bill. So those are the key figures, the, the 10% uh, of your income, your I'm sorry, your taxes have to be greater than 10% of your income plus all of the other qualifications. Regardless whether you file taxes or not, makes sense to contact the senior center and get on the list uh, and let them take a look at your taxes and see if you might qualify. So let's talk about a renter for a second. Same incomes. As a renter, you earn total $40,000 for the year. Your rent is $1,500 a month, which comes out to $18,000 for the year. 25% is $4,500. So 25% of your rent exceeds 10% of your income. You have 25% of your rent at $4,500. Your 10% of your income is 4,000. Therefore, you would get a $500 credit. And, and John, is, is yep. the credit if you're a renter, the, is the, the maximum credit if you're a renter the same as the maximum credit if you're an owner? the same, 1150. So the lower the income, then the higher the credit would be up to that maximum of 1150. So, so given the fact that rentals have really, rental prices have so increased in Hudson, this can be a really valuable benefit to a whole, whole lot of seniors. You, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm working on a project to uh, put some additional affordable housing in uh, Hudson. And it, it's amazing that when you talk about affordable housing, affordable housing in Hudson is around $1,500. Now, that's not what you would pay if you're renting a two-decker or a three-decker or something of that nature. But if you were to rent uh, at a place like The Point, uh, the new apartments uh, in Hudson, their average rent is close to $2,000 per month. So it's very high, very high. Again, if you're renting at um, a place like that, the $1,500 would actually be low. Uh, and, and most people aren't aware of that. Uh, the other extreme, you, you make more income. You make $70,000 uh, for the year your rent, 25% of your rent is $4,500. So that 25% does not exceed $7,000. You would get nothing. So it, it's all a reflection, you know, of the other. Uh, so that's basically it as far as the senior uh, circuit breaker tax credit. Uh, my message would be, uh, to look into this. And it doesn't have to be through uh, the AARP tax program. If there's anybody out there that uses uh, H&R Block or any of the services that you can get uh, and download onto your computer, uh, that's going to ask you uh, about the rental income and it's going to guide you through 
whether you qualify, you know, for the credit or not. Uh, my concern is those individuals uh, that do not file uh, taxes do not have to file taxes, so they may not be aware uh, that even though they don't owe anything in taxes, nor do they have to even file, uh, they can file and receive the credit and have it directly deposited into your checking account, uh, or if you don't mind waiting, uh, get a check in the mail, one or the other. And I think it's hard for people to believe that. They're, they're all used to thinking of the only money that you can get back from the government is money that you've that you've paid in or money that you owe them, as opposed to in this case, even if you owed them zero, you can get up to over a thousand dollars back just by doing this. And it, and it just applies to so many people. You, you know, the income lim limits that you're talking about, you know, are these are not unusual. It's not unusual to have a seniors that have less than like eighty thousand dollars in in, in oh, income. Sure. You know, so, so it applies to a t and it's great that you actually referred to what the tax rate, is, you know, what the average tax rate is here so that people can get a sense that this sure. could really directly affect them. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, again, going back to the uh, AARP tax program, uh, we probably did close to 200 uh, individuals. We had three of us working on them. And that's a very small number. I mean, the town of Hudson has a total population of 20,000 uh, people. Uh, so we're, we're missing a whole bunch of people out there that might uh, qualify for this program and, and simply don't know about it. Don't know about it. So that's a, that's a great summary. And once again, for folks who are kind of heading, the show is going to be shown in December. You, you know, you're heading into January. Just put a little note, put a little note aside to, to, to check this out. If you haven't used the program before, you know, and maybe you got lost by the numbers because you haven't done these before. Check it out. That's the point. You know, it, you know, the, the, the folks at the A at the senior center, nobody's there to say no to you. They're there to try to get you to say to get you to yes, you know, and to really help you. Yep. So now, John, can, can you in, in a, you know, we got about 10 minutes left. Can you talk a little bit about about what you know, we, you talked about what the tax rate is typically is going to be for what, what it is for this year, what typical people are going to be paying for this year. Can you talk a little about about how that comes out, how that comes about? You know, we, in addition to the tax money, where else does money come from? Where does the money go? And, you know, what people are always, you know, interested in is certainly how do you compare? You know, because people live in Hudson. You're always talking to your friends in Marlboro or Berlin and the other towns around. How do you compare to the places around here? Sure. Well, let, let's get down to the, the nitty gritty. And, and that's the fact that taxes are going up. Uh, no surprise, no, no surprise whatsoever. The average taxpayer is going to get hit with about $176 uh, on their taxes. And of course, we bill on a quarterly basis. Uh, so that's about a $32, uh, $33 uh, average in, increase per quarter. Now, when I say average, that's based on the fact that the homes, the average home, as I mentioned, in Hudson is $394,000. So if your home is assessed at a greater amount, then you're going to pay more than the $176. If your home is assessed at a lesser amount, then you're going to pay less than the $176. It, it's pretty important, I, th I think, for people to understand that what, when we talk about average increases, when we talk about what people are actually paying, I, I think it's very important to look at what are the other towns uh, in, in Metro West that we gauge ourselves off of uh, and measure ourselves we look on an ongoing basis at 32 different towns uh, in the Metro West area. And we compare ourselves not by tax rate, um, but rather by what's the actual amount, what's the actual average dollar amount that people are paying in taxes. So 
tax rates can vary substantially. Uh, the dollar amount is what's really important. Of the 32 towns that are in the Metro West area, there are only four towns within that area that have a total amount less than what the residents of Hudson pay. So nobody likes to pay taxes, uh, but on an average basis, on a relative basis, we do pay less than 28 other towns that are in the uh, Metro West area. So now, why do we even collect the taxes? Well, in, in order to run the town uh, and its essential services, things like the school department, the fire department, the police department, the Department of Public Works, and all of the other departments that go into the town, we need to collect X amount of dollars. And here's where we get our money from. As you are probably not surprised, the vast majority of the dollars that we collect to run the town come from property tax. That's 65% of our total income comes from taxes. The state contributes about 17%. Local receipts are about 17%. And why what's, a, what, what's a local receipt, John? Excellent. A local receipt, the biggest local receipt that we have is water and sewer bills. So the water and sewer uh, is run strictly out of the rates that each individual and business pays. So those are all local receipts. Other local receipts would be building permits, uh, marriage licenses, uh, dog licenses, uh, any type of fee uh, that we collect uh, from residents. Uh, excise taxes. Uh, excise taxes are a property tax and actually is part of uh, the property tax that I explained. Uh, and then uh, in addition to those three, uh, you have some miscellaneous. Um, we, we get some grant money, uh, very, very small, about 1% comes from some type of miscellaneous uh, fee. And where does the money go? Um, again, a, as you might suspect, the vast majority uh, of the money that we collect that goes to running the town through the individual departments that we have goes to personnel. <clears throat> Your big, biggest expense is always people. Uh, people represent about 70% of our total budget. So that salaries, uh, pensions, and everything else that goes into um, people. It's a big, big investment. The other problem, not problem, the other realization that people have to understand is that the budget and therefore your taxes are in all likelihood always going to go up if you maintain the same services and the same number of people. Most of our people are under some type of union contract. Contracts are negotiated on a three-year or more basis. So you're going to have, no matter what you do, you're always going to have salary increases, promotions, step increases, um, something that's going to generate additional dollars. Uh, and those additional dollars, because they represent such a high part of the budget, are going to mean that there's going to have to be some type of tax increase to take care of them. The only way you avoid that is by getting rid of people. Uh, and if you get rid of people, uh, in all likelihood, your services are going to suffer greatly. So uh, where does most of the budget go? Over 50% of the total town budget goes to our schools. 23% of our budget goes to town departments. 14% goes to benefits, health insurance, pensions, and 8% goes to debt service, 
uh, payback of monies that we have borrowed uh, for one reason or another. For example, to build uh, the Quinn Middle School or the new DPW police station or the high school or whatever other projects uh, that require us borrowing dollars. So I, I hope that gives you some idea of where the money comes from uh, and, and where the money goes. Uh, Arthur, is there anything that I can add or? No, I, and, I, and I would just mention, I know that it's a real challenge. I know from living in Malru, it's a real challenge to keep those those taxes down, among other things, because of the nature of the school population. Because I think one, you know, one of the one of the 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 real challenges for people like folks in Marlboro and in Hudson, where you're in it, where you're in a kind of a, of a working class community that has a significant amount of multifamily of multifamily housing. The one of the realities of that is that you you find you know you've got you you tend to have more expenses for English as a second language. You have you tend to have more expenses than you would actually in a Southboro or in a Westboro where, where you've got smaller immigrant populations, you know, and, and, and populations that don't require those services. So the fact that, you've, that you're able to maintain as compared to other, other Metro West communities, this kind of tax rate is really, it's really something. It's really something. Yeah, so, we've so, been very fortunate over the years to have uh, some uh, town managers that, that have really uh, been very sharp when it comes to the financial uh, aspects of the town. So we've operated uh, very conservatively uh, over the past 20 years, actually, uh, or more. So financially, uh, we have been and we continue uh, to be in, in pretty good shape. So, so on that bright note, and for, for Christmas, you're being told by John Parent that negative Santa Claus, that is the tax guy, is yeah. not going to be taking much more money than he has the previous years, right? Correct. Just despite the fact that we're in COVID and you know th things have been really tough, uh, and so on that on that relatively bright note, uh, we want to we want to wish everybody who tunes in here a uh, you know, once again a, a, a happy and especially a safe holiday. Stay safe. So I was talking to a friend of mine. You know what you don't want to be is you don't want to be the person that next Christmas someone says oh. Isn't it too bad? Auntie died. She's not here this year. You know, stay safe, right? The vaccine's on the way. We're gonna next year's gonna be a better year. And so to and to John, thank you so much for doing this year. You know, I really appreciate it. I think people have really come to, you know, enjoy these programs, enjoy the information. Sure. And so I hope we can we can convince you to stay on the show next year. So sure. folks, thank you very much for watching. Well, uh, have, a, have a wonderful holiday and we'll see you in January in the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Thank you.